Welcome to Cooking Made Simple with Chef Kelly. I'm Chef Kelly. And today I really like to talk to you about something really special and something that's really nurturing. Soups, in particular winter soups. It's a cold January day. I got in today and it was really, really freezing. And I figured, you know, what best way to really celebrate the winter with a nice, wholesome, comfort flavored soup, right? And I want to take some of the mystery about it. So um, as we talk about soups, there's a couple of techniques I want to show you that you can apply and go from winter to summer, right? Summer soups and what makes one or the other different from the other, right? Um, so let's get started really quickly and talk about the main ingredient in any soup, stock, your broth, right? Um, so I want to talk about that and, and we'll, I'll tell you all the details of what we're going to be making with them in a second. Um, but I want to introduce you to these three types of broths that we have here. Okay. Um, some are similar and some are very different. So we're going to work with this first one here is a bone broth. Okay. It's a chicken bone broth. It's really deep in color, right? And what it means is that the, the bones have been cooked longer. They're double stocks. They start with a stock and then add more bones to it. And a lot of times they'll break the bones up and have the marrow come out which gives you that little gelatinous quality and also a richer flavor. It's a lot of great nutrients and right now it's a trend to be drinking this bone broth because you have a lot of nutrients in that. A lot of collagen, which is really good for your body for regenerating your, a lot of your joints and your nails and your hair and things like that. So that's what this first broth is. The second broth we have here is this a very simple chicken stock. So it's a lighter version of this first one and it's just not, they usually do, do, do use the bones, but they may not crush them. They may not put a double uh, amount of stock to it. Whereas I mentioned, they may start this stock by adding this into it, right? So you have that. So this is a, a lighter broth here, okay? And then finally, we have our third one. Uh, and there's plenty others as well, but this one here is a vegetable broth, right? And, and what makes this one, you can see, has a little more tomato in it. It's a little redder to it. Uh, and they all have different purposes, but a lot of times they are interchangeable. Right? So in the case of the vegetable broth, we're going to make a vegetarian style soup. Not vegan, but vegetarian, because we are going to make a cheddar broccoli soup. Okay? And now we're going to use that as a vegetarian base. No, no meat in it whatsoever. And that's what we're going to do here. Okay? And then we're going to make a nice Tuscan bean soup with the regular chicken stock. That will have a little pancetta, so we have a little meat inside that one. And finally, we're going to make a nice chicken and vegetable with herbs. And what's great about this one is that the vegetables really enhance it and change it up. So the, the bone broth, okay, is going to be nice and rich and deep. Sometimes it's a little too rich because as you cook it down, it, it pulls more flavor. So we're going to add probably a little bit of water to it. I probably put some more water on the side because you have to adjust it here and now. But what I'm going to show you is three soups that are very basic, fundamental techniques that you can apply despite changing up the ingredients based on the season or what you have available. Right? That's the whole point of the show. It's always cooking made simple. So, uh, for an example, we got a vegetable soup with chicken. If you want to do only vegetables, you, mo you take out the chicken and maybe use the vegetable stock. The concept's the same. But maybe in the summertime, you got some zucchini and fresh spinach. Um, you got other things you're working with, right? Maybe you're not going to use butternut squash like I have here. Have to have some, uh, some parsnips as well. So, they will lend themselves to the flavor. Let's just say, for example, we make this soup in the winter and have the same amount of ingredients in the summer but by changing the zucchini, okay, or maybe the type of onion we use, whether, and we use chicken as well, right? Maybe you go from Swiss chard in this case to spinach, right, or kale. This time of the year you can use kale. It's one of the options I'll talk about in a second. And you can make everything the same size but it will have a totally different flavor because the butternut squash will be a little sweeter, the, the parsnips which are a nice rich, like a little bit earthy, but like a white carrot, as I like to call it, right, will be, there, will be there as well. Change it up. When we go to the bean soup, and we'll talk about it a little bit later, again, we can interchange the stocks if we want. Uh, and what I got with the bean soup is that if you decide to change it to omit tomatoes, or you have different types of tomatoes, or cherry tomatoes, or you use prosciutto, or you use um, um, other types of meat in here besides the uh, the pork product, or you change your beans to black beans and put chorizo and things like that. Uh, the concepts are the same, right? So it's all the same. Just change up the ingredients. And then finally, the cheddar soup, the cheddar broccoli soup. is a, There's a fundamental thing on this one here we're going to talk about. It's called a velute, right? And that's a base to a cream soup. It's usually a roux, which is flour and butter, and stock. As simple as that. 
and then you, what you put into it makes a difference, right? So again, let's get started because we have three soups to make. It's cold outside and we got to get going. So the first thing I want to do um, is really make the, the chicken soup, the chicken vegetable soup. Really simple. Now I will tell you, these are all store-bought stocks. I didn't make them fresh. You're welcome to do it and get a nice big old stock pot like this one. Put your chicken inside here, right? Put your vegetables, you simmer it, put some herbs in it, and you make a nice fresh stock. If you want to double it and then make a, a broth out of it, a bone broth, you can certainly do that. That's one option, right? And you got these nice little pots and they, they, they all work, lend themselves to what you're doing. Now, um, in this case, because I, I want to pull it out of the cupboard, I want to make it relatively quick. Um, I have these things right here, and that's what we're talking about today. All right, so let's get started with the chicken soup. So first thing we're going to do is um, let's talk about the chicken. We got some chicken thigh meat that's been skinned off, no bones, and chopped. So I bought it, skinless, boneless, and I just chopped it. We're going to use carrots, onion, celery, as we call this. It's called maripois. When I make a rustic one, I like a little bit of the rib which is the, 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 um, the leaves, right? The interior of the celery. It's a little sweeter, a little bit more unique, right? We're gonna use some butternut squash because it's in season. It's, it's, I want that fall, winter, deeper flavor, right? Um, a little sweeter. And then I have, you could put yams or sweet potatoes if you like. And then I have uh, some parsnips. I love the flavor of parsnips. Now, to round it out a little bit, we're gonna put some Swiss chard, okay? It's nice, but you do that towards the end because it's a green. Now, you can use kale, right? You can use collard greens. Collard greens will cook longer. You would need that. These cook a little quickly, not as, not as fast as, as uh, spinach would, but same idea. And we may put a little bouillon, okay, a little bouillon cube. But we'll, we have a nice rich flavor here. We may not need it, but I wanted to touch base about this because this is important. Um, a lot of professional kitchens use these things as well. All right, so right now I got a nice big pot. It's going to be brothy. I got to warm up a little bit, right? I got some garlic cloves right and i'm going to put some olive oil on this one now there's different types of olive oil this one's a nice kind of medium light flavor i don't want it overpowering it if i was doing the tuscan bean maybe i want a deeper richer good flavored olive oil something a little more, more off to it because i'm making this more of a, of a chicken soup i don't want to overpower with that olive flavor so we're going to turn this guy up a little bit once we get the garlic going and the garlic starts to lightly brown, okay, we'll add the onions, carrots, and celery, the maripois. Now, we want to brown the garlic a little bit or brown the onions a little bit because I want to get a deeper, richer flavor. This is where some of the technique changes a little bit. If I was doing it in the summertime and I was doing a minestrone or I was doing a, a light vegetable soup, I may not want that deeper caramelization, right? Lightly sweat it, as we call it, we call it sweat it. This, enough to where it's translucent and the flavors come out, right? That's what we want to sweat it. In this case, I want them to caramelize a little bit, get a little brown, a little toastiness, a little sweetness to come out. Again, it works with those richer, heavier flavors for this time of the year that you want. So I love making soups. It's one of my favorite things to do in the kitchen. Uh, when I first started working in the hotels, I was put in the saucier department. And the saucier made soups, stocks, and, and sauces. And it was just all day long. And in a big hotel, we're talking 50 gallons at a time, four or five big stock pots, huge, like as big as as tall as me, and, and, you, and you fill it up. And I love doing it and making these soups. Now, it was a different style because you had to do volume, so you had, to, you had to do things a little differently. But a lot of principles were the same. So I, I got this passion for cooking soups and stocks and sauces. Um, and, and in some cases, it's kind of a lost art because a lot of places not doing it or they just kind of use one technique. Um, so what I like about it is that it's really, to me, is one of the most ultimate comfort foods. That and pizza, right? I love pizza. But... Ultimate comfort food is making a really great soup. And just recently with the cold weather, we're all home. We have a couple of six folks at the house. It's that time of the year to be sick. And what do you want to do? You want to give them, you want to make a nice, rich, nurturing soup. And what's really good about this, and they say chicken soup is really for you when you're sick, right? It's true. And the reason why it's true is because there's a lot of nutrients in these vegetables. And they bleed out into the stock. And that's what you drink. So you get the hot liquid that opens up your pores, right? Opens up your nostrils. And you got all those nutrients coming into, into the stock as well that goes back into your body. So that's, what's, that's why it works so well, uh, particularly chicken soup because it has a lot of stuff, a little protein as well. Um, so it really, really lends itself to making you feel better. 
All right, so I got the garlic starting to cook up a little bit. Notice I got kind of big pieces here. I like that rustic look of the big of the big garlic, right? I like that, and as you're cooking it, it softens up, and you kind of crush it, and it comes out. So it's, it, it kind of gets, when you roast garlic, right, it gets a little brown on the outside, and then as it cooks longer, particularly if you have a stock in it, like a vinegar or something, it will soften it up, then you crush it, and it comes smoother. So it's almost kind of like that, but I'll keep them chunky. And, and also that, the more you chop it, and you may like this, it's completely up to you, the more you chop it, the more assertive it's going to be. I don't want this to be overly assertive in that respect. So, um, because you release the oils when you chop it, right? The more you chop it, it releases more of the oils. So we'll let this guy get a little bit of brown. Okay, he's getting a little brown over here, ready? All right, now I can put my maripois. You hear that sound? Now, in a professional kitchen, I may not cover it because my, my stove is strong, right? So I get that sear going out. Right? Um, in this case, I want to keep that heat inside there. So I may cover it a little bit, keep the splatter from happening in my house so it doesn't go over the place. Um, what's really nice, as I said to you recently, it, it's, just been, it's been really cold out. And it was, it's a great day watching football this time of the year. Just put a big old pot of soup on, start at 11 o'clock. By, by 12.30, really, it doesn't take that long. Uh, by 12.30, it's really good to go. Now, one thing about soups, a lot of them taste better the next day. So you cook them, and we put, cook it early, then we'll have it, and then we'll have another one later, and then we'll save it the next day. We may make a sandwich with it, simple lunch or something like that, or like dinner. And that's what's great about it. You can make a big old batch, and you can have it for a couple of days in, in different forms. Um, so I think that, you know, it's like a chili, right? When you make a chili, you kind of let it go, and then you eat it throughout the day, and then you have the first game you run, and then you eat it again for the second game, you know? Um, so really, it, it makes it, it's really a nice thing to do. Again, it, it's just that comfort, perfect for this time of the year. All right, so we got that going there. We're going to use the, we're going to use the bone broth. We're going to have stuff here. Now, soups are easy in general. But if you don't know techniques or you don't know what to change it up with, it gets intimidating. So, you know, there's other methods too, right? If you're going to use a, a fresh bean or you're going to use a lentil or something like that, maybe that's, that may change how you, how you go about certain things, right? But from a general standpoint, if you want to cook a quick dinner, really nutritious, if you have a couple of these items in your, in your, in your cupboard, right, the bone broth, canned beans, some canned tomatoes or, or whatever have you, um, and whatever vegetables you have. What's nice about the vegetables is that if you have a small amount of a little bit left over from different things, it kind of adds to the whole dish. So you don't have to worry about having enough of one item to feed 20 people or five people, whatever you have in the house. Just a little bit of each kind of goes a long way. All right? All right. So now I got this caramelizing a little bit, which is what I want. Okay? And I want to add my chicken. So before I do the chicken, let's talk about it really quickly. So... If you want to do um, a chicken thigh or uh, a breast or anything, legs, and then simmer them and boil them, you can go ahead and do that and then pull the meat. That's a nice, great way. You have a nice broth to work with. You can add that to it. If you want to get a whole chicken, like I mentioned, and put it in a stock pot with water. If you're doing that, as an example, that's when the bouillon comes really good. So you put your, your chicken inside the stock pot. You fill it up with water. You put some vegetables, some herbs. You throw a bouillon cube in it. It comes out rich, rich and deeper. That's what's nice about the bouillon. It's more of an enhancement. And, I, and I'll talk about that when we get to it a little bit later. I don't want this to be my main ingredient, but I want it to be my enhancement ingredient. Okay? All right. So now i got my, my vegetables cooking here. Just sweating them out a little bit. Lightly caramelize what I can. Got a little bit of color, a little bit more depth and complexity. So we talked about this before. What makes caramelization? It's the sugars in the onion or the vegetable, in this case, carrots and, and onions, or if you're going to sear meat, that natural sugars in there are caramelizing, turning caramel, hence caramelization. In the case of this one, we're having a rich, deeper flavor stock broth, chicken soup. That caramelization is going to add to the whole dish, right? So a little bit of light caramelization. I don't want to do too much, okay? Remember, we got that garlic already caramelizing. Onions are starting to get a little bit brown, all right? Let me put this guy down. All right, so chicken. Now we'll do this here. So, I'm not looking to make this chicken brown too much, right? Um, you can, 
let it get a little bit brown. And, and that's going to help a little bit, right? It's going to get a little deeper flavor to, the, to your stock, to your broth, your soup, which is what we talked about, right? It won't get too brown in here for two reasons. One, it's a little overcrowded, which I'm fine with. I'm not worried about that. And, and two, um, when I put the cover on, it will steam up a little bit. So that won't brown as, as, as easy as you want it to do. Okay? So that's working there. And really, once we get this, everything else inside here, you let it simmer. You let it go. You adjust the seasoning. And you let it simmer nice and slow. And really, within 45 minutes to an hour, this is done. Quick, simple. That's done. And then we'll get started on the next soup. So this doesn't take a lot of effort. And if you can make it easy for yourself, and if you don't have a lot of time or you want to do something on, on a Sunday right afternoon, you want to have something nice for dinner, and you don't want to make it too much work, you could turn around and buy all these vegetables pre-chopped at the store and put it all together nice and vibrant and fresh and, and really just healthy for you. Uh, you could certainly do that. If you want to chop, by all means, do so. Um, but again, if you're looking for an easy, nice, full meal that's really healthy, um, you could take those, those shortcuts. All right, so we'll let this guy go. Now, we have our bone broth, as I mentioned, right? It's really rich and deep. And then we have the bouillon. Now, because this bone broth is, is, is really deep in color and flavor, I, I do want to thin it down a little bit. I want to add some water to it, dilute it a little bit. Because as it sits, it's going to get stronger, okay? And then we'll taste it before we do anything, and we'll decide if we need to put even a half a cube just to enhance that flavor. Now, when you do a cube of any type of bouillon cube, they have a lot of, sometimes they have a lot of salt. So just be careful with your salt content. Just know that. And then you can adjust accordingly. Really simple things, a um, little technique like that. Now, if you were doing this in the summertime and you want to have great summertime vegetables, or like, let's say springtime, um, maybe you may not want to use the bone broth. Maybe it's a little too rich for you. So you go with the chicken stock, as we talked about, right? You can, you can kind of alternate that. So you can do this one. It's a little bit lighter. In that case, you may need a little bouillon on this one because it may be a little bit lighter. But don't forget, you're going to get the flavor of the chicken kind of pulling out into, the, into your soup here. Now, it's important to note that it's getting a little bit brown. It's important to note that all your other flavors are going to come through, your herbs, right? Your, your vegetables, and then the parsnips and things like that. All right, so this is good. We're going to add our butternut squash. We're going to add our parsnips here. Um, one thing I will caution you is that the, the leafy greens, like in this case, Swiss chard, don't need a lot of cooking, right? I like to put them at the end. But if you're doing maybe collard greens, you'll probably cook them, put them in like halfway through the process. So let this guy get all nice and hot. We'll add our stock. And then we'll add our herbs. And the soup is good. Pretty simple. Nothing much nothing difficult from that. Okay, so... While we're waiting for this to kind of come up the temperature and kind of get the vegetables to cook up a little bit, let's talk about our herbs here, all right? This is important because there's, it, it sometimes it's confusing on what's what, right? I have a little bit of dry thyme compared to fresh thyme, right? I also have some dry bay leaf compared to fresh bay leaf, right? If you, if you get a close-up of this one, you'll see that it's bright and vibrant on the fresh one and dry and dull on the dry one, Okay? So the flavor is a lot more pronounced and, and more vibrant in terms of freshness to it with the fresh one, obviously. But the dry one tends to be deeper and it, you kind of cook it so a little bit goes a long way. Like this would be normally this size, almost that size, and then it dried it up. Um, if, you don't have, if you can't find fresh, dry is fine. I like bay leaf, particularly in, in a winter stew or soup like this, even a chili because it's good for that long period of cooking. It does really well with that. Um, if you were thinking of like a basil, for an example, that won't work well with a long period of cooking, right? When you dig a tomato sauce, you put basil at the end, so it's vibrant. So if you're gonna put basil in a soup, you're gonna put it at the end. If you're gonna do it in the summertime, you're gonna put it at the end. But if you're gonna do something that has a long period of cooking, that's where the bay leaf comes in. So um, rosemary and thyme, kind of the same thing on that respect, okay? Um, they, are, they are a really good long, long cooking process herb, right? Now, dry is a little bit more intense. It's intense because it's been dried, right? Think about it, it's, be, it's, being, uh, it's intensified, right, and dried out. But it also has a uniqueness to it in terms of how it, how it flavors, right, your thing, your stock, your soup, whatever it is. So dry is different. If you try dry, fresh oregano compared to dry oregano, they're almost night and day. 
And same, time, time still kind of stays to its character, so does Rosemary. Um, but I do like, and, and this is what I'm going to show you a little technique, I like to use a combination of both. I like the fresh vibrantness of the fresh one, but I do like that little, that little bite that the, the dry one gives too. Okay? All right, so this is, so you see how it's getting crowded, and when you looked at it down here, it was starting to boil down there. There's all the juice, all the juice coming out. So we're not going to be able to sear up anymore with it. All right, so let's put our stock in here. Okay. And knowing that I got to put a little bit of water for two reasons. Why? One, because it's, it's strong. Two, because I got chicken in there already. And three, it's going to reduce down. Right? So these are, these are the things I'm going to do. Um, put that in there. Okay? So now I want to put my, I got some great bay leaf. Just kind of tear it. Leave them big so you can find them later. Okay? Um, same thing with the, with the thyme and the, and the rosemary. A little more rustic. I want to put these in here and I'm going to just keep them as they are. And I'm going to fish them out later. Right? I like that look. So we're going to put a little salt, but be careful with the salt because the stock may be salty. And if we decide to put some bouillon, that's sea salt. Okay? A little bit of black pepper. All right? Now, remember I told you I like the dry thyme? We're going to put a little dry thyme. Okay? And it's a pinch. This is what you like. So it's your choice of how much you want to put in. All right? So we're going to turn this guy up so he comes to a boil. And we're going to let them simmer. Now, if you tasted it, what I encourage you to do is taste things in stages. Taste them now. In this case, it's raw chicken. We'll taste it to a minute or two. But taste it in the beginning stage. See how it flavors. Taste it halfway through. See how it developed. And then obviously taste it then and adjust the season accordingly, right? How it's developing and then you adjust it at the end. There's more salt, right? Uh, maybe I want to put a little bit of fresh herbs at the end to give it a little brightness to it. All right? So let this guy go. You will get a little bit of... Um, Foam on top, and we're gonna we're gonna scoop that out later. It's more of a cleaner look to it, um, and a cleaner taste as well. All right, so we got that going. Let's not forget this this the Swiss chard a little bit later. I'll put that right here so you don't forget about it. We got our stuff here. We got our herbs. We may use some of them again later. All right, and then I'm just gonna hold off on this bouillon in case we when we need it. All right, next. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna move this stuff over here so we can talk about this guy. Okay, we're going to do. The bean soup, all right? So, I got some pancetta, right? And I'm gonna put it in the pot. Okay, I warmed up the pot. Now, if you watched any of my other classes, shows, you'll know that we're gonna render this out a little bit. And when we render this out, okay, uh, what that means is that the fat is being, is cooking out slowly. So that's what we wanna do with that. Notice I have no oil in it. It's dry. Okay, I'm not putting any oil in that. Okay. Now let's talk really quickly on, on, these, on these pots here. This is more, this is a little thinner than this one. So sort of for the chicken broth, it's, you can get away with a little bit lighter. But I needed a bigger one because I had a lot of stuff going on here. So I went with the bigger pot. This one I want a heavy gauge. Okay. Because I want our, to cook them more evenly so it renders a little bit evenly. Heavy gauge, thicker. Now, um, We'll let that, we're going to help that along with a little oil because it seems it's a tad dry. Sometimes the pancetta, I bought this pancetta already chopped at the store to make use of it, right? You want to use prosciutto, you're not really going to have oil in it, right, or fat in it. So once I do this, it's about to come up a little bit. I want that flavor in there, so I'm not, I'm not afraid to have the oil in it. I'm not even going to take out the, 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 the grease in it that comes out. I want that flavor, okay? Just a tad to help it along. It's starting to cook out. So what, what goes in this bean soup? Well, it, it's actually a pretty simple recipe. I'm not doing too much to it, okay? I'm going to put in some garlic. I want to have the beans in here. I'm going to put a little ch chopped tomato. Now, this particular tomato, it's a chopped tomato in a can. I want that juice a little bit. So I got some pancetta here. And then, you know, I want to finish it with something unique, right? So I got some nice Swiss, uh, some uh, escarole. Let that cook in there as well. You can do Swiss chard. I happen to be doing Swiss chard here. Escarole works here. Again, I want a richer, deeper flavor. We're going to put some garlic. Now in the garlic, before we put that in here, remember we talked about the, the finest, the more you chop to it, the more assertive it is. Well, we're going to chop this up a little bit because we want this a little assertive. Okay? So I don't want all this garlic because I want to reserve a little bit 
for the last soup. All right. Put that aside here. So there's a lot of labor-saving options out there when it comes to buying stuff at the store, right? And finally, we'll have our stock here. So remember I said to you earlier, if you wanted to get some onions here, excuse me, we got to have onions, of course. We're going to let that render out. We're going to put some onions. Okay, bring that temperature up. So, what's our ingredients? Okay, in this case, we have the beans, garlic, onion, tomato, escarole, olive oil. Okay, we've got some herbs we're throwing there as well. And this particular one, I like the rosemary. I'm not going to put bay leaf because uh, I don't think it needs it in this particular one. I like bay leaf more in a, in a broth. Um, actually, in South America, what they do is they take the bay leaf and they, and they bake rice with it, right? So, you put the rice in a pan. They put onions, whatever, but they put bay leaf in it. And then they put the stock, and they bake it in the oven. What a wonderful flavor. It cooks so much nicer in an oven like that. Very, 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 uh, very uh, South American when they cook their rice. So bay leaf is good for that long period of time of cooking. I'm not going to cook that this long, this much, right? If I was doing fresh beans, I would have to pre-cook them a little bit, soak them overnight, cook them a little bit, then I could do my thing. Now, the thing about this particular soup here is that um, this one we're doing brothy. This one we're going to do half puree. And finally, a third one is going to be a full puree. So we're going to take it into stages, right? So we're letting this guy come up a little bit. I want to let them render. You want the fat to cook out so it's not chewy anymore. There's nothing good when you start biting into it and it's like chewy. It's just kind of weird, right? So I'm, I'm, I'm helping the temperature come up. I'll take the cover off. I'll let it steam out. I'll let it get a little bit the fat kind of rendered down, okay? So if you look at here, these little, these little pepper, that's from the pancetta. That's, that's in there. I didn't put that in there. That, that little pepper, if you can see it, okay, that's from the pancetta. It's rolled inside there, okay? So, don't move it around a lot. Spread it out so the fat can render and it doesn't steam up, okay? Once that's nice and rendered, has a little richness to it, where the onions, where the garlic will saute that guy up. Simple so far, right? Nothing difficult. People get intimidated with how to make the soup. Or they don't know. They do one technique and that's all they know how to do is one thing. But the basic fundamentals are the same, right? We got our broth one going here. We have our, our bean one going here. The fundamentals for this one and this one and that one, they're different from each other. But if you change them up, the different bean soups, the different pureed soups, the broth soups, those all work relatively the same, okay? So this is smelling really good. It's getting nice a little bit brown here. Um, so what can you use in here? You can omit any meat if you want, make it vegetarian. You want to take pork out, you can do like a turkey bacon, which I recommend. That would be good, nice smokiness to it. You can use regular bacon if you want. You don't necessarily have to use this one. You can change it up a little bit. I would use like a pepper bacon or something like that. I may not necessarily use a maple bacon. Um, so, because I won't want that, that flavor in this one. It's just me. But if that's all you got, I'm sure, I'm sure it's going to taste great. All right, this is getting nice and brown a little bit. So now here's the second part of this thing. If you make it too brown and then you put your garlic in it, before your garlic is brown, okay, you may burn your pancetta, so you be careful with that, okay? All right, so we have our onions here. All right, we're letting that guy saute up. We're going to sweat them up. In a case like this, I don't necessarily need to brown the onions or the garlic too much. Get a little sear going that way. You can hear that. So let's take a peek over here. See, if you, take, if you look over here now, you're starting to see the, the little foam that's coming up. Okay? So as it comes up, we'll skim that off, as it's called. So you go around in a little circle. Okay? These are the impurities, as they're called. They're all the little natural impurities that are coming up from everything we've put in here and getting rid of all this stuff. You, can you eat it? Sure. We'll, we'll boil back in. Sure, it's okay. But if you want more of a refined soup, particularly with a clear broth, okay, um, you want to get rid of that. All right. So we'll put that here. Now, it's still going to happen a few times more, so we'll skim it a little bit more. Okay. All right. Now we got this guy going here.
Smells great. Pancetta, garlic, onions. Smells fantastic. This is the way it is. Oh my God. So good. Okay. Now, you could opt to put the tomatoes in here um, or, or have fresh tomato. You can chop them up. But again, if you have things, certain things in your cupboard, you can do certain things with it, right? You can leave it. You can do it a certain way. But we're going to put this tomato in a little bit later, not now, because we're going to put the beans in with the stock, let it simmer and cook a little bit. We'll puree half of it. Then we'll put the tomatoes in, let them come back up, let the flavors cook out a little bit, and then we're good to go, practically. And then we'll finish it with the escrow. Okay? All right, so this has a nice little brownness to the edges there. You can see that. We're going to add our beans to here. Now, the beans, I, they're already cooked. I rinsed them. They have that, that, that creaminess to them. Does it hurt? Absolutely not. I don't like it. Um, it's not a clean of flavor to me. So I, I usually wash the beans out. If I was going to make a puree, I may keep them in there like, like a bean paste. Um, I may, but you see me do that before, which I which I didn't do. So in my house, we always have beans around. We freeze it. We keep them in the cooler. I'm sorry, in the uh, in the can in the cupboard. So we always have beans around. We always have diced tomatoes, crushed tomatoes, right? We have all that stuff. Um, so this is something I can put together. Like I said the other day, I want to do some soup. I just went in my refrigerator. I went in my cupboard, and I was able to in the pantry and just kind of make things based on what I had. So now the soup is a little bit. Um, coming back to this guy real quick. The soup is a little bit light because I added water, remember? So, but it's all going to cook down. I can smell already the parsnips and the herbs particularly coming out. Now, you can't smell it, but let me tell you, it smells great for sure. Um, this, the soup, really, soup is just a, such a nurturing thing to, not only to make, because you watch it simmer, right? But just to really to eat. And, and, you know, everyone wants a cup of soup. You get a cup of soup. And then you, and then you kind of, it kind of starts you off, right? And then you go and, and you have your appetizer, or you have your entree, or you just want a simple soup with some, with a grilled cheese. That's what my wife and I had the other day. We had the soup I made, right? Next day, what do you want? We came home for dinner. We had we made a couple of grilled cheeses and had soup. And it was a nice light dinner. It was perfect. We, it really satisfied us, and we were, we're happy with it. All right, this bean's going in here now. I don't mind getting this bean nice and hot because I'm going to let them kind of mush up. We're going to puree it with the, with the machine, the stick later. But in this case here, I'm gonna, I don't care if I'm beating it up, because I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to break it up. So this is smelling really good. Now, two things. When you have a cover on, okay, it takes longer for it to evaporate because the steam is staying inside. It doesn't evaporate. Okay? It does come up quicker. Once it comes up, then it, then it takes time. But all that moisture stays in there. It's logical, right? When you take the cover off, you'll start to see the steam would evaporate. So that's where you get the strength. But I don't want to take the cover off quite yet, and I want to lower this down a little bit because I want the flavors to extract and meld together, right? So I'm going to let them simmer. I'm going to lower it because it's boiling all strong now. I don't want it to boil too much, okay? And we're going to let this guy go, and we'll come back to it in a minute. All right, next. So now we're going to put our stock in here. Remember, this is just the plain chicken stock. I may not need it all, which is something to keep in mind. Because when you pure, right now when you look at it, it doesn't look that thick. But when you puree it later, okay, it will get maybe too thick. So you might have to adjust it. Adjust it. If you put it all in there and it's too, too thick, you can add a little water. In that case, you might have to add a little bouillon to kind of pull it back up. Okay? So you don't necessarily need to do uh, too much of it. I know I need, instinctively I know I'm going to need a little bit more. But I'm going to hold the, the rest back because I may not need it. Because then it's going to be too thick. So we'll put that side over there. Now, we're going to put some salt and pepper. Be careful with beans in particular because beans tend to salt in it. There's a good high concentrate in it. We've got our pepper in here. Right? And now, I'm going to add some rosemary and I'll also put some thyme in here. I have it, right? We're going to take some rosemary. I'm going to add this to this, this Tuscan bean soup. Why they call it Tuscan bean soup? It's just because it, because it originated from Tuscany? Probably not. It's just, this sounds great, right? I, I don't think there's an origin to that. It's funny how they always call it that. Um, but I think it really, it just kind of has that nice wholesome sound to it. Uh, it's great. All right, so we got our thyme here. We got our rosemary here. Um, if I was making this maybe in the summertime, Instead of pureeing it, I will leave it. I will leave them whole, so you see the beans. 
again, the puree, it automatically tells you that it's going to be thicker and it's going to be probably a little heavier, at least in its, in its texture, right? So in the summertime, I could do a bean soup or maybe in the summertime, I actually had on my menu for the longest time, it was with fennel, tomato, and beans, uh, almost like equal parts, sort of, right? And it was and more of a tomato fennel soup with, with white beans and a cannellini beans. And it wasn't pureed, but it was very light tasting, which was great. We did a vegetable stock into it, so we made it nice and healthy. Um, but that was the, 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 the version of it. So in the summertime, I probably would not want to puree it because I can, have, I can make it lighter. It would, texturally, it would be lighter, right? I don't want that. But because we're more in the winter, this time of the year, I want to have that stick to your ribs, that, that comfort style. That makes sense? It made sense to me, at least in my mind. So hopefully it makes sense to you. All right. So we're going to do rosemary. We got our thyme in here. We got our salt and pepper in here. All right, we got our beans, we got our pancetta, we got our onions, we got our garlic, right? We got escarole, we got tomato. We'll let this guy come up and we'll come back to that. So, just taking a quick peek. How about vegetable soup, how it's doing here? Chicken vegetable, I should say. Smells great. This smells really wonderful, like that nice rustic with the with the with the butternut squash, the parsnips, really lend itself totally different to it. Okay? So, see that broth? is deep from the color, and the chicken is cooking in there, already bite-sized. Now, if you were cooking your own chicken, and you boil it, made a stock out of it, okay, you, would, you can pull the meat, and in the case of that, if you're pulling the meat, you put the meat towards the end. You won't put it now. In this case, we have raw chicken in here, so we want to cook it. Now, the chicken doesn't need long to cook. They're small, okay? All right, so taking a minute to clean up. Put that aside here. All right, so this is chicken. This one's vegetable. I don't want to forget them. Make, make sure you don't make me forget. This is vegetable. This one's chicken. They're, they're the same packaging, same brand, but they're one from the other. All right, so here's our vegetable stock. We're going to start on number three, right? We got our cheddar cheese. We'll move our chicken stock back here. We got some broccoli. Broccoli cheddar. Oh, my God, so good, right? Broccoli cheddar. Got some flour, got some butter, got some grated cheese. I want to introduce you to a little bit of secret, backing up really quickly over here. I'm going to introduce you to, we're going to put a little splash of vinegar, white balsamic vinegar, um, in the bean soup. That's a little bit later. That's a little nice to lighten up. I like that, I like that acid flavor to it. So, and finally, we got a little bit of onion here as well that we're going to put for the... Uh, broccoli cheddar. All right, so I'm going to move this guy around here so I can have more room to work. A lot of little things happening, right? Put these guys in the side. All right, so the broccoli cheddar, just this here. Broccoli cheddar. What, what are we going to do here? I mentioned the word velute. What a fancy word. What does that mean? Oh my god, velute. It's basically a stock thickened with roux. What's roux? Flour and butter. Okay, it's a thickening agent. These are French terms, by the way. Okay? So, you're going to start with the roux first. You're going to do um, the flour and butter. There's a very important technique that we've got to talk about. you got to cook the flour a little bit. Okay? Because the flour really has to cook out. Otherwise, it tastes kind of sappy or, or very starchy. So, you have to cook that a little bit. So, that's the important thing to note when you're working with this. So, we don't need a big pot here. We're making a small batch, okay? But we will need room to puree it later on when we use the machine. So let's get started with this one real quickly. So I'm not going to use all this butter. It seems like it's scary to see all that butter, right? So this one here, you want to be careful because you don't want to burn the butter, right? That's why the heavy gauge works really well. So we're going to lower this a little bit. Okay, so we're going to add some onion to it, and we're going to sweat this onion out. We're going to puree it, so I'm not worried about being, this being too, um, too small, the onions, right? And then real quick, that little garlic that I saved, remember I saved it, I'm going to add a little garlic right to the 
butter. And we're going to sweat this guy out, as we call it. All right? So I think we need a little bit, like a one and a half sticks. We're going to put another small piece in here. Okay? If you're on a diet, this is not the soup for you. Just tell you right now. Okay? I just want to let you know straight out. It's not the soup for you. So um, it's giving you a fair warning. Okay? So, all right. We're going to wait for our Tuscan bean to come up. Okay, so now here. Now, we're going to add the flour to it, to the, to the butter, in a minute, once it gets hot enough. And we're going to lightly whisk it, okay? And meanwhile, at the same time, the garlic and the onions are cooking, they're sweating. Now, a traditional, be more, more technical, it's a 60-40 ratio. What does that mean? It's 40% fat and 60% flour. That's how you typically make a roux. Now, no, one's, no one really measures it that way. And when I mean fat, it's, it's just the oil pot, not the whey. So with butter, it has 80% of it is oil and 20% is whey. So that 80-20, the, that whey is the white stuff. When you cook it out, you can boil it out and you'll see all the whey cook off. You'll be, you'll be, it'll be clarified butter. Uh, in India, they call it ghee, right? They call it ghee is what, what that is. But clarified butter is what it is. And um, it's a lot more stable than using the whole butter. If you use the whole butter, okay, it can burn on you, right? So when you make eggs in the morning in a restaurant, you would use a clarified butter, okay? But the yield is lower than typically. It costs more money then. So in the case of this one, when I add the flour to it, okay, it, it kind of distorts the ratio a little bit. So I kind of just had a rough guess. We do a 50-50 ratio. The way it cooks out a little bit, but it's important. I know it's kind of technical what I'm talking about, um, but understanding that. So just taking a peek here. This is smelling great. Oh, my God. So I'm going to leave the cover off for a little bit now. It's because I want that to intensify. And, and while we're waiting for the butter to, to kind of cook up a little bit, I want to taste and see how this is doing. Remember I said halfway through the stage? Okay. So see if it needs more cooking. So the water definitely lightened it up a little bit. And, and, and two things in mind. If I want more broth out of it, right, I'm going to put a little bouillon so I get the flavor. If I don't mind having less broth and make it a little bit heartier, I may cook it down more. But then I worry about the vegetables getting mushy or the chicken getting a little weird texture. All right, so I'm going to put a little bit of bouillon in here. Again, flavor enhancement, right? Easy on the salt on it. This will pull it all out. So using the whole bouillon in this case. So we make stock at the hotel, and then I'll use the base or the bouillon. We call it base uh, as, a, as an enhancement. And that really kind of lends itself to putting everything together. All right, so we got our herbs in here, right? We got our, our bay leaf in here. We got the vegetables going in here. We'll put that a little bit later. All right, so let's take a peek at this one. This is coming up here. We got a lot of things happening right now. Okay, see that foam that's coming up? I want to be careful with this particular one because all those nice herbs went on the top. So I want to gently go around here in a circle, just try and get the, the foam to get in there, not the herbs. Okay. So let this guy cook here. I'm letting that oil cook, okay? So if you run the risk of maybe having a little too much oil, which I think may have a little bit here, let's take a little scoop out, and I, and I can always add it back in, all right? So that's a little trick sometimes we get caught up with. Maybe it's a little more than you needed, and you're like, oh, what do I do now? It's too oily. I don't want it to be oily. So let's take a little bit of this oil out, a little of this butter, okay? So there you go. Even, even professionals kind of make mistakes. <laughs> So, not really a mistake, we're just adjusting. We're working on the fly. All right, so I'm going to add my flour now. Now, it's important to note, I want the flour to cook. Remember I told you about that, that raw tasting flour, starchiness? Okay, I want this to look like a little bit like wet sand. I can always adjust it. So wet sand from Maria Beach. How's that? See, it's almost there. So it's about a, a cup or so, a little bit more than a cup of flour I got here. And I got a stick and a half of butter. I took a little bit out. 
Um, looks like it's, it's doing pretty good. Um, now, one thing about when we're going with the puree, once we add the vegetable to this, in this case broccoli, okay, that will give it more body too. So you may not necessarily need all the roux, okay? I think this worked out pretty good where it is. So that extra oil, I'm not going to use it. All right, so we got our vegetable. You notice that with the cover now, it's, it's not boiling as much. So we're going to bring that up a little bit, get the flavors going there. All right, we're going to cook this flour here. This roux, as they call it, right? You want to get that, that raw starchiness kind of cooked out. Okay? And let's see what's happening here. Got a lot of things going on, guys. All right. So, it looks very soupy right now. So, if I was going to use this as a summertime thing, I may be putting escarole and a tomato right now. And then, in the case I told you, like at work, I had fennel I would put in there. And you can kind of have that nice, that nice brothiness to it but we will puree it. When you puree it, you're getting more body and more texture. And that will make it thicker, right? So that's the same point I'm bringing about with, with the broccoli cheddar. Once we put the broccoli in here and we puree it in the stock, it's going to have more texture, right? Now, when you're doing the broccoli, we'll, come, we'll put this guy back on. When you're doing the broccoli, okay, I want to put a little bit of carrot. I don't want too much carrot in this one. Okay, it's enough. The reason why I want the carrot in here is just because it gives a little sweetness. So we'll put a little carrot, right? But when we put the broccoli in here, if you're buying whole broccoli, right? Whole head. The stems are perfect for this. Absolutely. Put the stems in here. Take that little, uh, that little bottom piece out that's brown, usually a dark. Chop them up. Put them in here. So normally people just throw the stems away. That's great for your base of your soup. In this case, I just bought the bag. I have the florets. So what I like to do is the ones that are big and ugly and not so happy looking, I'll just turn around and put those big ones in here. Okay, and I'll puree it. All right, so we're letting this guy cook a little bit. All right, we're going to bring this guy up here. This nice brothy, nice and healthy and brothy soup. Smells so good. So this, this is going back to this one. This is, this, this is like the most comfort food there is, right? Chicken soup. You're just drinking it all day, bone broth. My wife and daughter just recently went to a nice spa over for a weekend. One of the stock and stuff that I gave them for Christmas, and they went away uh, down in the, out in the Berkshires. And in the spa treatment area, this wellness resort they were at, in the lobby, besides, they didn't have coffee, they didn't have tea, they had bone broth in the lobby, right? You just get a pitcher, like a coffee urn, and you just took it out and you drank it all day like tea, because it's so good and healthy for you. Um, and that's what this is, right? Nice and brothy, you just drink it, you treat it like a tea. Um, my favorite thing to drink and make is actually consomme. It's really rich um, broth. So kind of the same thing. All right. So this is cooking. You need about 15 minutes or so to kind of kick, cook that out. Now I'm going to add my broccoli in here. I'm adding my, my beat up pieces, the one that's not so pretty. Maybe something that has a little bit of, uh, you know, big pieces. And then the little ones I'll use for later on for, for topping it. So we'll leave that guy for later. Okay. So, now we're going to add out, we're going to be adding our stock in a minute, but another technique that's important to know with the stock is we're going to add a cold stock to a hot roux, okay? And that's going to keep it from getting um, lumpy, right? Because if you had a hot stock with a hot roux, then as soon as you put that in there, they lump up. So you want to do a cold stock with a hot roux. Now, you could do the other way around too. Um, a cold roux, if you pre-made the roux we had left over, you probably wouldn't do that. We do that in kitchens, professional kitchens. But you would heat up your stock. If you do a cold and cold, sometimes you just don't know where it goes, and you may put more than you need of stock or not enough once it starts to come up. So there's a reason why you do the opposite temperatures, so you have a better sense of where it's at, or it doesn't uh, puree, it doesn't uh, clump up. Now, we are going to puree this anyway, so clumping up will be really irrelevant because we're going to puree it. All right, so this is simmering really nice, smelling really great. This guy's simmering a little bit. Right now you got the pancetta, you got the beans, you got the onions, garlic, you got the herbs. Smells great, okay? You got a little foam there. I want to take that. No, there's no more foam on this one. Foam is pretty much gone. I got a little foam here. Push them to the side. Go around in a circle. Get a nice cleaner look. In this case, this one doesn't matter as much because you're going to puree half of it. Anyway, and notice I'm just going barely just touching it at the sides here. So the herbs still stay in there. All right. So I see my flour. 
is good to go. Okay? So now we're going to add our stock a little bit at a time. We're going to add more, don't worry. But right now what I'm trying to do is make sure that it's incorporated and as smooth as possible. Okay, and then we'll add the remaining. Let this guy simmer. We'll, we'll let them simmer. We'll adjust the seasoning. Then we'll puree it. We'll finish it with cheese. And we're done. That one is really simple too. Not difficult at all. Okay. So in this case here, the vegetable needs to cook. See, I can see it's getting thick. So I know already that I'm going to need some more. Right. Now, a couple things about this particular soup here. I think move this out of the way so you can see better. Okay. When we puree it, the vegetables are going to add body to it, right? When you add cheese to it, it's going to add more body to it. So you might want to have a little bit more on the thinner side, okay? So when you puree it, you hold it up so it's not too thick, okay? All right, we're going to let that go there. I think that's good. We can always adjust it. So if we have a little bit of extra stock, we'll put it later. Um, so that's it. So we'll let this, we're going to season this guy. You need to season in a couple of different stations, right? You, you stages, rather. You put in a little seasoning. So notice instead of pouring it from here, I either put it in my hand or I put it like that. When you pull like this, I can control. This one I can control. If I do this, if someone bumps into me or the cover comes off, listen, I've done that plenty of times. Even now I still do it. So put it in your hand or sprinkle with your finger. Trust me, it happens all the time. All right? So we put salt and pepper in this guy. We'll see how this comes about. Okay? Get the edges on here. This guy's jumping back out. That's good on that one. So we'll, we'll briefly talk about the, the leftover pieces, the florets. I want to put them in at the last minute uh, so that after I puree it, so it has a little bit of floating texture to it, some garnish, as they say. I'm going to put a little grated cheese to pull out that saltiness and a little more cheese to it. And then I got a nice chopped cheddar. Um, this has happened to be a shredded bag cheddar. You can shred your own. You have, probably have better quality when you shred it on your own. You can also choose which one you want. I got a vegetable bouillon. Probably don't need it, um, but I just have it here anyway. All right, so the beans cooking. The beans are cooked already. We don't have to cook it long. All we're trying to do is infuse the flavors, okay? So a little bit more here, a little bit more foam coming off, and I think we're, we're good on this one. This soup is just about done, actually. Um, so we're going to test it one more time and make sure that the flavor's right. So I came here, I rolled up my sleeves, I'm ready to do some cooking, saucier stuff. That's what I love. I like, I like little things. All I got so many things happening, right? I got the stock pot here, I got the vegetable there, I got the cream base here. I just, this is where, so this, my hands are getting there, down and dirty, it's getting right in there. This is what I love to do. This is what's great. Yep, that bouillon made a big difference. Still needs to come down a little bit more. Okay, it's a little light. Okay, I'm going to put a little salt in this one. More salt. And I think I want to put a little bit more of the dried thyme in it. A little bit more assertiveness to it. Okay. And that's almost good to go. So now what I'm going to do is finish it with the Swiss chard here. Okay. And I like greens in the soup. Again, the folic acid that these greens offer, an uh, iron that they offer are really healthy, and that the, right, the vibrant colors, and you don't need to cook it long. You can leave them chunky like that, okay? And once you just put them in here and let it sit for a little bit, it's, it's, it, it's just gonna, it's gonna wilt, and it's gonna give you a lot of flavor. All right, so here's our bean soup, all right? It's got a nice texture already. Come back to that one. Let's take a look at this. I think I lost my spoon. Here we go. Let's see. Now, again, we're going to adjust the, the, the flavoring. So the beans are cooked. Everything, nothing here is raw. Okay. So one thing I want to do, again, it's completely up to you. I'm going to put a little pinch of red pepper flakes in here. Okay. It's optional. Just a pinch. Now, put the red pepper flakes in right about now so the oil kind of comes out and homogenizes in there. It's a, an interesting word, right? 
So homogenized. What does that mean? It, it, it kind of pulls it all together. When you put in like a red pepper on top of a pizza and eat it like that, some of you love it that way. I don't like it that way because all I taste is red pepper. It overpowers me. It sits in there. When you cook with it and it gets dissolved and starts to trees, the oils start to come out and bleed into the rest of the dish, the tomato sauce, or in the case of the base of beans or stock, the flavors are more homogenized. Kind of, it's hot, but it kind of tempers a little bit. So I like to do that usually. All right. So that's, that's just about good. This guy looks great. I, I think I'm just going to shut this guy off. I'm happy with this one. It's going to sit. Now, here's the thing. It's uh, Sunday. It's cold outside. You got the vegetable soup done. I cooked this live right here. I had a couple things I chopped, a couple things I bought, right? It's an hour. It's done. It sits there. You come back. You eat it. You take a bowl. You eat it later. Sit it out. Reheat it. Put it away. Heat it tomorrow. It's done the way it is right now. Let it sit. Let it melt. Let, it, let the flavors kind of meld together, right, as we say. All right, so while I'm waiting for that guy, let's see how this one's doing. Okay, so it's going to get thicker. Broccoli and the carrots are going to cook. Then we're going to puree this guy nice and smooth. We'll add a little bit of cream at the end. I'm not going to use all that cream. Don't get nervous. We're not going to use all that cream. We've got a lot of things happening here, but all kinds of good stuff. All right, so this, be this bean soup, I'm going to lower it for a minute. It's because we're going to wind up... We're going to puree it now. Only half of it. All right, so I got a little immersion blender. Pick them up um, anywhere. Really nice to do a lot of things with it. We're going to use it in two forms. So we have our broth, we have our half puree, and we're going to have our full puree. All right, so you got three different methods. You turn it on. Don't do it on the outside. If you turn it on and put it in here, a splatter on you. Put it in first. Then puree it. Now I'm not looking to puree every, everything because I want the soup to have, I want to see some of the bean. Okay? So we'll let that cook down a little bit. It's a little on the thin side. So we're going to let that cook down a little bit longer. We're going to add the tomato in there. Okay? Okay, we'll come back to him in a minute when it's time to do the broccoli. It's a little thin. Remember I was telling you about I was concerned about it being too, too thin or too thick when I put the stock in it? Um, not bad. It's okay. And in a case like this, if I wanted to use it like this, I could just put a little, little, little roux in it or a little cornstarch or whatever. I'll put another can of beans to it and call it a day. Um, but I'll let it cook down a little bit. Okay. And we're going to add these tomatoes. So these are chopped tomatoes in a can. You can certainly use fresh one. I don't, want this to be, I don't want this to be a tomato soup, but I want to put tomato in it. Does that make sense? So I don't want it, I don't want it to be overpowering or too much to it. So we'll put that in there. We'll let this guy kind of cook down for a little bit. And then we're going to put our... We're going to put our escrow in the last minute. And the escarole doesn't need a lot of, uh, a lot of stuff. Or as we like to say at the house, escarola. Put the scarola inside it, right? Like everyone says that. Particularly here in Riviera, a lot of us say that. We'll put some fresh pepper. Fresh pepper. So I got the table ground pepper I've been using. It's a little more assertive. But fresh pepper has a uniqueness to it. It's a little fresher. It's more vibrant in a different way, right? All right. So that's cooking a little bit. We got a lot of stuff happening there. Um, and, and I also want to mention that grated cheese is a little option if you want to put this on top. If you want to finish the soup with a little olive oil or sprinkle of cheese, you can certainly do that. Remember, don't forget, we're going to add the vinegar to this one. Okay? So, this is our finishing stuff. All right? Let this guy cook down a little bit. Now, here's a good example of something you can do. Is you'll put the, the cover halfway on. That way you can kind of cook it out and still kind of protect your stuff. It's another thing I do often at home. Here's our, how was our vegetable soup? This looks great. This is this nice vegetable, chicken vegetable. Now, remember, this one, like I said to you, and I, I really want to emphasize, the technique's the same if you do it in the summer. Change up the vegetables. Use a chicken broth as opposed to the bone stock, uh, the bone broth. Um, use a vegetable stock, right? Um, you could do a combination of tomato and vegetable stock, so it's a, a lighter tomato, and you can do things like that. And then use those summertime herbs that you have in your garden, right? Basil, parsley, fresh oregano if you're doing it. Uh, nice time, that vibrant stuff. The dry stuff kind of lends itself. That bay leaf I mentioned, 
the, the dry time, lends itself to the time of the year we're in, okay? So that's working. This is boiling nice over here. This one is, now it's coming up because remember, we started with the, the stock was kind of cold, okay? And I want to be careful because I don't want to burn this, right? Once the stock comes up, we may need to adjust this. I can see it's getting a little on the thick side. As it gets hotter, it gets thicker. So we'll add a little stock if we need to, right? And then once we puree it, the broccoli will add more body to it. Pretty simple. Then, of course, we're going to put the cheese in it. And it's going to be luscious and smooth and silky. That's what we want. We're not going to puree it after the cheese gets added. So we're going to puree it before that. And the cheese is going to go in and going to fold it in. Maybe put a little bit on top, right? If you want to put a little scallions on it, great. Options, if you want to put a, an option you could do is you could put a little bit of sherry uh, or a touch of brandy. Those work well, all right? So let's see, again, stages, right? Let's see. Flavor's pretty good already. So I got to be careful with the saltiness because I'm going to add a little grated cheese and I'm also going to add the cheddar cheese, which could be salty. This is a sharp one, so could be that way. The broccoli hasn't come out yet. Because it's the first thing I could tell it's not done. And two, I, the flavor's not fully immersed yet. But it's getting thick, so we may have to add a little bit of stock to it. We'll come to that one in a second. We'll see how it does. And you can see it's bubbling over here. So it's telling me it's a little thick. It's, the way it's bubbling makes me nervous. It's telling me that it's, it's probably a tad thick. So you adjust it. So... You know, everyone's, every oven's different, every stove is different, every pan, pan's a little different, the hands are slightly different. So I can't say for certain that it's going to be exactly a quart or two quarts or a quart and a half, something like that. You have to adjust it, right? So you adjust accordingly. Now, I'm waiting for the carrots to come out so it sweetens it up. I like to cook these heavier things in a heavy gauge pot. They just cook long. They cook better. They cook. They can cook longer. If you use a skinny pot, a thin pot, like that stock pot I showed you earlier, this one here, the stock pot or this pasta pot, it's thin. Okay, and then you you can scorch the bottom of your your soup. So the heavy gauge, particularly with a thick thick soup like this, could 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 scorch the bottom. All right, a little bit more stock here. And I think we'll be okay to let that go for a little bit longer until the broccoli and the carrots are cooked, then we puree it. Okay? Now, I will tell you for sure, this will taste great, as soon as we're done, but it tastes better if you made it today and served it tomorrow because the flavors just kind of marry better, particularly with thick items like this. All right, so look at our bean soup here, right? The color got a nice little red tint to it, right? It's getting thicker, but I don't have it thickened like this. The thicker, the thickness I have it is from the bean puree. So you don't have to worry about, it has a nice body to it. It's a little more brothier, it's lighter. Well, I want a little more body, I want to go down a little further, as we talked about. But generally speaking, um, it's looking really good. All right, our broccoli soup. So right now, if we didn't do any cheddar, and we put more broccoli, we got broccoli soup, broccoli, broccoli cream. That's what we have. The base is done, right? So there you got You got a broccoli soup. You're learning two soups out of this one here, broccoli cheddar or broccoli. You want to do mushroom. Omit the broccoli, put mushrooms in it. Puree it, mushroom soup. So you see how this is going, right? If you want to do more carrot, okay, you probably use less flour, less roux, but a lot more carrot. Again, puree it. You got the idea. It's a velouté base, stock with roux, okay? It gets body. You cook it out, and then you puree it. Now, certain things work well with one another. Certain liquors, right? A sherry or brandy, those work well with certain flavor profiles. Or curry works well with carrots. Or ginger works well with carrots. But the idea is all the same. You just change up your vegetable. So... You got onion, you got a little garlic, right? In this case, we put a little carrot to give a little sweetness to it. I'm watching it from burning, so I'm careful with that. And once the flavors are, are going like that, we'll lower this down a little bit, lower that down a little bit. This one's already done. 
All right, ready? Escarole inside here. Now, you notice wilt, wilt's down to nothing practically. So we'll put that all in here. So the scarola goes inside there. You mix it around. And we'll just put some olive oil, a little splash of the vinegar. And you got your nice Tuscan bean soup. A little sprinkle of cheese on top. And that's nice and hearty and rich, ready to go. That's almost ready. Look at that. So that was one whole head of escarole. Chopped it up, it wilts down. Again, I like the greens in here. I like the, the vitamins that they offer me. Okay? So that's good that way. That soup is just done. This soup is done. This is almost done. Okay? I'm really making sure the broccoli is done here. And then... The flour is cooked out. You're cooking flour twice here. I should have said that as well. The first time when you're making the roux, you're going to cook the flour with the butter, 15 minutes or so. And then when you add in the stock and you're letting it simmer, you need a good 15 minutes for that as well. So you get that, that, that starchiness to cook out. So I'll, I'll, that soup is done. I'm going to shut him off in the back. Okay. Got that nice bean soup. Now I'm taking all these soups home. I'll leave some for the guys here. They'll enjoy it. I'm going to take it home. I got dinner all week long. I mean, we may be souped out by the end of the week, but we got dinner all nice long. Eat simple lunch. My wife could take it to, to, to work. Okay. So what do you what do you need to do with some of these soups? And I'll real quick. I want to show you while we're waiting for uh, this last one to finish up. You need to have a little bread, a little crusty bread. So I got some simple ciabatta. We're going to put some oil on it. Okay. Put a little bit of black pepper if you want. It's completely up to you. And I do want to mention about this one. I want to shut that off because that's that's pretty much done too. And the residual cooking will be there. Now, on this particular bread that I'm doing right now, um, I don't know, we might have talked about it before. I put a little cheese, a little olive oil, some black pepper. So here's the thing. We're going to put this on the broiler in the oven for like, a, like two minutes, not even. The broiler, <coughs> excuse me. And the reason why we're doing that is because I only want to toast one side to get a crusty bread. Okay, so that's all I want to do. All right, I'm just gonna take this out of the way. I'm gonna splash a little vinegar. Now you can put a little white vinegar if you want. I got a little balsamic, uh, white balsamic. Again, this little sweetness into it, a little tang to it. Okay. By the way, let me make mention that if you're going to use tomatoes in this soup, and I highly recommend you do, and you use the and you don't use the the um, the, the canned tomato, use plum tomatoes. Don't use the regular beefsteak tomatoes. The plum tomatoes cook better. They don't turn to mush. They're more body and texture. So you put plum tomatoes in here if you're going to do that. Okay. So just keep that in mind. All right. So this guy's is done here. Okay. So the heavy gauge that I have down here, I know for some reason, I know that I'm going to need more stock. As soon as I puree, it's going to be too thick. So I'm just going to bring this stock over here. I might need a splash of it. And it's not as complicated as, it's, as I'm going back and forth. But you have it next to you. You're cooking it. You're watching it. Okay. Before we get started on that, let me just double check. The bread because we don't want it to burn so a nice crusty bread so as I started to say is that I want to just toast the top so the the bottom is, is is still soft and chewy and the top is crusted right so I'm waiting for that to just get toasted on one side if you're doing a bruschetta right a bruschetta means anything over bread doesn't necessarily mean tomatoes you want something crispy all the way through because as you put it on top it softens it up but if you're doing a crostini, you're cooking only one side, right? So it's crispy on one side and soft and chewy on the other. And we're kind of making a big crostini here. Remember, so now this one here, we're going to go inside. So certain, some of these uh, bur submersion mishkas have different speeds on them. This has a double speed, but then it has a, 
on, um, a top. If you do it on too high of a speed, it incorporates air. So you got a little carrot in here. You can see those little things of carrot. Actually, the texture looks pretty good. But as as we add the um, as we add the cheese to it, it's going to get a little thicker. All right, there we go. Okay, so before we move on, I don't want to burn our bread. All right, so that's getting nice and toasty on one side. Okay, almost there. All right, so let's taste our soup here. Let's see what it needs. Pretty good. It needs a little more salt. We're gonna add our cream to it. I'm gonna add all the cream, okay? And I'm gonna add the grated cheese, as I told you before. This gives me a little body to it, right? Now, I'll add the broccoli pieces here. I'll let that simmer in here and let them cook all the way. Remember, that's not cooked now, remember? I didn't cook those. So we'll let that cook in here just for a few minutes. And the soup is just about done. Okay, so two things are happening. I'm letting the broccoli cook, I'm letting the cream come up on temperature, and I'm adjusting the seasoning right now. That's what I'm doing, okay? So we'll let that come up, and then we'll add the cheese to it, and this one is good to go, soup number three. I don't even think we need the stock. That worked out good. So we're not going to use that. All right, so we got our nice chicken vegetable. I'm going to let this guy come up, and we're going to start to serve it. Okay, our bread is ready. Beautiful, perfect. So now, as you see the bread, it's, it's crispy on this side, but soft on the other side. So now it's nice and, nice and chewiness, okay? Put this guy here. Okay, everything's hot. Beautiful soups, nice. People get intimidated with soups. I don't know why. I mean, it's just because they're not sure what to do. But listen, I, I told you about the vegetable soup, the chicken vegetable, what you can do to make it change it up a little bit, right? That's easy. Nothing to do on that one, right? You change your vegetables. You may change your herbs, okay? You, maybe you want to change up your stock a little bit, right? That That's simple. There's nothing... Nothing difficult about this one. There's nothing difficult about all of them. Now, if you get a little bit of time, you can pull it out. Okay. What's nice about this one, I really, really love the way the butternut squash looks in here. And I like the, the Swiss chard. Nice and, and vibrant. So here's our first soup. Put them right over here. Now we'll do our bean soup. Okay, so the bean soup with the escarole, okay, semi-pureed, you got the pancetta in this one, you got the escarole at the end, okay, you got some tomatoes in here, you can change it up, nice and vibrant, we're going to add a little grated cheese, again, that's optional if you want, and we're going to put a little bit of, as I like to call it, a little love on top. With that float on top. You want to put a little pepperoncini, a little pepperoncino. Help yourself. Next and finally, we didn't quite get done yet. We still got to add our cheese to it. What I like to do about, the thing about the cheese is that once you, it's hard to reheat sometimes because it settles to the bottom and can scorch. So if you're going to serve this right away, that's fine. Put it all in there. If you're going to reheat it the next day, this... Heat it up before you put the cheese in it, then put the cheese. Okay? And all you're looking to do is let this all melt in here. This is simple. You could put a little garnish on it and sprinkle a little on top and then a little bit of black pepper. I like the black pepper because it makes it a little assertive. All right? A little more cheese. Probably need about two and a half cups, maybe three cups for this batch right here. This was about three and a half cups that I had here. So. 
This is good. The cheese is salty, but don't forget we put a little grated cheese in here too, right? That's enough to put on. It's a seasoning. I'm using the grated cheese as a seasoning. So a little of that goes a long way. All right, so here we go. We have our nice broccoli cheddar soup. Okay. Remember, you just change up your vegetable or put more of one and omit the other and you have yourself a beautiful broccoli soup. You could put a splash of sherry or brandy in it. Okay. We're going to put that on top. And then, as I mentioned to you before, I like the way the fresh pepper goes opposed to this, um, this table ground pepper. This, it has a little combination of both powdered and, and coarse. Okay. So, any one of these things... You have your little Tuscan bread or your little toasted ciabatta bread, okay? Any one of them. And there we have our winter soups for you to enjoy. So let me know what you think. Hopefully you make them and, and, and really appreciate them, particularly this time of the year. Um, and I think you really love them. And then, like I said, you can change them up to other styles based on the season you're in. So, buon appetito, grazie, and good night.